Which one of these faces is real? And which one was created by a computer? Can you tell? Today we're going to play a little game. We're going to dissect some of these photos and talk about why fake real people might take over advertising. In a world that's already dominated by Photoshop and filters, what does this mean for us? These people look very real. What does this mean for our self-esteem and how we as humans communicate with one another? And as for the answer, this one is the real one. There's a website that I found called whichisreal.com. These are images of people, and you're supposed to try to tell which one is made by a computer and which one is an actual person. I want you to play along with me, see if you can figure it out, and we're also going to discuss why this is a potential issue when it comes to marketing and advertising. Okay, uh, these look like complete humans. Can you tell who's real and who's fake? I'm zooming in to try to see. My job is in social media, so usually I can tell when images are photoshopped, but these look totally real. I'm gonna say the child is fake, just because he has a little bit of color here on his neck, but that could also just be the lights from his hat. Oh yeah, I'm right! Um... Her teeth look a little bit messed up, um, but her jaw also looks like it has a little bit of cracking. I'm just gonna guess randomly. <gasps> I was wrong! <laughs> wow! Artificial intelligence is the idea of training neural networks and training computers to be able to solve problems or make predictions in a way that the human brain does, only with lots of math. Essentially, neural networks have been created since the 80s. They are programs that try to get computers to think somewhat like a brain. You have data that you input into the system, you put it through a lot of linear algebra and even through multivariable calculus, which yes, is very confusing, and the inner workings are actually hidden most of the time and then you get spit out answers. And sometimes the computer is right, sometimes the computer is wrong. But just the way you can train a child to not hit other kids, you can train this computer system to say, this was wrong and this was right, here's why. The computer can learn from that and actually get better over time. It is quite interesting, it is quite fun to play around with, but it's also quite scary when you don't know if you're looking at a real person or a computer-generated image. Out of these two, oh my god, like I can't even tell. His glasses are a little bit messed up and I see some scarring on his cheeks that doesn't look like real acne and trust me, I know acne. Also her fake eyelashes, I can see the shadows, it looks pretty real. I'm gonna guess that the guy on the right is fake. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Oops. <laughs> mm. Just so that you know what I'm looking for, I'm looking for her neckline, um, I'm looking for wrinkles and texture to the skin and the hairline, or even glasses, just because computers aren't perfect yet. Um, but to see this generated in less than a couple of seconds is scary. I'm gonna guess that the woman with the bangs is the real one. Yay! <laughs> Oh man, they both look very, very real. Oh, you see this piece by her ear? This makes me think that she is fake. Yes, dude, I can't even tell. So why is this an issue? Well, there's a little bit of debate about how we compare ourselves to others and how we see ourselves when it comes to photo editing and social media, but also replacing humans with computers, specifically models. As a little bit of background, I used to be a model. I stepped away from the industry because what I was promoting wasn't matching my morals and values. As a model, I tried to convince myself that the industry wasn't making me feel bad about myself and that I didn't have issues, but when I look back from a clearer perspective, I realized that some of the experiences that I had or the things that I was told impacted my body image, my self-esteem, and the way I viewed myself negatively. Specifically issues that are current are those when it comes to racism and representation of different body types, different skin colors, and also different religions, different views. If you go into a store to buy clothing, you want to see what that 
clothing will look like on a general person. That means different body shapes, different skin colors. But a lot of the advertising, especially that came out in the 80s and the 90s, all had a very similar look, which media then called the ideal standard of beauty, which made people who don't naturally look like that feel really bad about themselves. So obviously when photo manipulation came out, it was difficult because am I comparing myself in the mirror with my acne scars, with my frizzy hair, and with my imperfections and lumps and curves and angles to someone who is completely smoothed out and looks ideal or perfect? The reason I post the unedited picture next to my real one on Instagram is because I don't like the way people, including myself, compare their before person to that fake after image. Uh, speaking of, I can't even tell which of these two are real or fake. I'm going to guess that the little girl is real just because those shadows are pretty hard to mimic. What do you guys think? Yes, I was right. There's also been a trend in plastic surgery. You know, in the past, people would come in with a photo of a celebrity and say, I want Kate Middleton's nose or I want Kim Kardashian's lips. Now people are taking in pictures of themselves with a Snapchat filter or an Instagram filter saying, I want my skin to look like this. I want my nose to look like this. I want to look like my artificially intelligence edited self. <laughs> and for those who are doing that because of insecurities and a lack of self-confidence and other issues, of course that's damaging. But when it comes to artificial intelligence, how are images like these replacing models and feed into this entire issue? The fact that computers can create images that like between these two, I could not tell who's real and who's fake. It has a start to question reality. If you see an ad on TV of a woman telling you about a medication that really saved her life and helped her with her acne and you see an amazing before and after, do you believe her? Well, what if her before and afters were made by computers? It, it creates a lot of deception in advertising. This is also used in politics. What if you have a politician standing up and saying something that is absolutely horrible that you could never support? What if that was all created by deep fakes, fake videos, people that don't even exist, and fake voices that are meant to impersonate other people for the purpose of deception? That's a little concerning. And then it comes back to the modeling world. But first, if I saw both of these women on a billboard, I wouldn't know who's real and who's not. Again, I'm looking for skin texture because I am a trained medical esthetician. I know skin pretty darn well. I'm going to guess that this one's skin is a little bit off. Um, so I'm going to guess that this is the real one. Ah, I'm doing better. <laughs> But how does this all tie back again to computers creating fake models for us? Well, it's the idea that if a company wants to be diverse, they should hire people, models of different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different religions, ethnicities, etc., to represent their clothing, their brand, their makeup company, or whatever you have it. Yes, that can be pricey. So what if instead a company decides, I don't actually want to pay models to be diverse. I'm going to pay a computer system instead so I don't actually have to employ people of different colors, religions, viewpoints, etc. It's a way for businesses to save money, yes, which is good, but do you see how it's not even getting to the issue of wage inequality or of racial segregation or of inclusivity, which is the purpose of having a diverse cast of models for an advertisement? And then when it comes to the consumer, it doesn't show us actual reality. Are they still showing us idealized versions of a body or of a skin tone? We don't actually know anymore because it's becoming so hard to tell person from computer. I look at these, um, God. So I'm looking at the glasses. If it weren't for this like little piece by his eyebrow, I don't think I could tell that he was fake. I'm gonna guess she's real. Yes, I'm correct. Can you guys tell? <laughs> this is unreal. I encourage you to try this out. Oh, her teeth though, her teeth. That is an AI generated tooth right there. And his glasses are normal, I'm guessing he's real. Yes. <laughs> 
I do encourage you to try this out. Um, just a note, the website witchfacesreal.com is not a secure connection. I looked into it, it seems okay, but if you're not running a virtual machine or if you don't have a VPN, a virtual private network, just be careful about your internet security because they are running Google Analytics on this page. If we take a look, they're running Java along with our HTML and it looks like they do have Google Analytics running. So they are taking data about where you are, what your age is, basically everything that Google Analytics already does. So just keep that in mind when it comes to your data and privacy. I'm guessing the guy is real, but she looks so real too. <laughs> Let's look at her neck. God, she looks totally real. He, his skin looks real. I'm gonna guess that he's real. I was wrong! <laughs> How would you feel if you found out that the advertisement you saw before this YouTube video or next to it contains a computer generated person, an artificial intelligence person? Do you not really care? Does it not matter? Or does this lead to deeper issues for us as a society? Is it worth discussing or should we just kind of turn a blind eye and say, hey, at least their face isn't smoothed out to the point that we can't see pores. It's a more realistic image than half of the people over photoshopping themselves on Instagram, myself included. How do we feel about it? Beautiful butterflies, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but remember that there are two sides to every story and reality is not always what it seems. Sometimes there isn't even a right side. There's something in the middle, or there's a Z plane that you didn't even know existed. Which one's real? I don't know. <laughs> Her eyeliner looks real. Oh, the microphone is hella messed up. Okay, microphone's messed up, so she's the fake one. This one is gonna be real. Nice headband, ma'am. Scar. <laughs> Consume your content carefully and make sure that you that like button and be sure to whoosh, that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you want more of my views on Photoshop and the modeling world, you can watch that ding, 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 right here. And I cannot wait to see you beautiful butterflies in the next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.